Good morning friends from your local Walmart parking lot. I'm currently in Bozeman, Montana. I have been in Montana now for a couple weeks. <laughs> it's very early in the morning so I my voice is not fully woken up yet. Uh, but I've been in Montana for the last couple of weeks. I have all three dogs with me right now. I have my two, Ella, the Golden, Pearl, the Chihuahua, and Finn, my fiance Henry's dog. Henry is currently on the East Coast. He is having some work done on his van, and so it's just taking a little longer than we anticipated. So we had gotten an Airbnb for like a week, and then after we checked out of that Airbnb, his van was still not done, and he realized probably the cheapest thing to do and like a way to kind of what's the saying knock two birds out with one stone that's it uh was to go to the east coast use that as a trip to see his family because we don't get to see our families super often and so he went to the east coast he's currently staying with his family just for the last like probably 10 days and we have a few more left. Um, while he's doing that, I am basically just traveling in my favorite place. We kind of separated in Portland. Instead of doing the typical Washington and Oregon thing, which is what we, I feel like we always do around this time of year, I headed to Montana and Wyoming. I did Yellowstone, Grand Tetons. I did not get a single video there because why would I do that? Um, I just really honestly wanted to enjoy the two days that I was in the parks. And so I just kind of like did my own thing. But I have all three dogs. We're hanging out at Walmart right now. I just woke up and we are going to go to the dog park. I love the dog park here. The dogs love the dog park here. Also, later in the video, I am going to share with you the pros and the cons of having dogs on the road. This is a question I've been asked since the beginning of time. Uh, if it was worth it and what challenges there are that might be different from the challenges of having a dog in a house, I'm sure some of them will be the same. Uh, but I'm going to kind of tell you about my experience having dogs on the road, especially having three right now. I felt like this was an appropriate time to address that. And yes, let's get started on my second cup of coffee. my bed there's two of the three dogs my neighbor for last night and my home good old Walmart good morning Ella good morning Ella yeah Okay, between Ella's breathing and the air conditioning, I'm not sure what this sounds like right now, but we are ready to go. Nothing should fly off the counters or out of the upper cabinets. Let's just take one last look. Yeah, we are good. I do think that my skylight's open. I'm just not realizing that, but we're going down the street, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. We are going to, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but it's like Gallatin Regional Park. It's just the best dog park in Bozeman. By the time this goes up, by the way, and you're seeing this, I will be gone, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, my sister's calling BRB. What I wanted to say before my sister called is that people like to leave comments. First of all, if you're gonna leave comments about anything, leave comments about the dog fur on the bottom of my glass right now because uh, my cup holders are gross. However, people always leave comments about how, oh, you want a little coffee with your milk? Because I make lattes. Have you ever heard of a latte to those people? It's basically, I drink oat milk. So it's oat milk and ice with two shots of espresso. That's just literally the definition of a latte. Uh, so people always talk shit and I'm like, I'm not drinking, like it's not just coffee, it's espresso. It's a latte, iced oat milk latte. Get with the times, okay? It's 2023. Although I do love like a hot coffee from a gas station on a long driving day. It really hits different for me, honestly. But on like a typical day like this, 
I am drinking an iced milk latte. All right, I have just arrived to the dog park and before I set out uh, with the dogs, I am going to be making my AG1, who is also kindly sponsoring today's video. If you have not heard of AG1, it is basically like a foundational nutrition supplement that kind of targets like full body health. So I noticed the biggest difference in my gut health. There are loads of prebiotics, probiotics, um, all kinds of really amazing stuff in here. I notice also the biggest difference if I have a glass of wine or two at night and I wake up if I'm feeling anything from that wine. If I drink my AG1, I feel immediately so much better. And that's not the only time I drink it. Henry and I drink AG1 every single day. It's a really easy daily habit to make sure that you are getting the nutrients that your body needs. And it's super easy to make. I'm going to make mine right now. And essentially, you just take a scoop that they send you. They send you like the little canister, the scooper, the bottle, everything that you'll need. And you just take the little scooper, put that in some water. I prefer mine. So does Henry, um, like a little bit colder. And so I put some ice cubes in mine as well. I add maybe a dash of oat milk occasionally and then you shake that up really well and you are good to go. I really love the taste. I've been drinking AG1. If you don't follow me on Instagram, which you should, I've been drinking AG1 pretty much every single day for the last like two years. Uh, Henry has been doing the same and my sister actually, when she called a few minutes ago, was finishing up her AG1 for the day because she orders it every single month. Um, if I post on Instagram or something, she always uses my link. And so I will also add that link right here. I believe it is drinkag1.com slash divine on the road yt but i will put it on the screen here and in the link in my description box as well if you would like to order your own by using my link you'll also get five free travel packs and a year supply of vitamin d Okay, not only am I back in the van after the dog park, I drove an hour and a half to Butte. Um, that was not in the agenda for today, but I've been in Bozeman for several days and I was just getting, not even tired of it because I love Bozeman, but I was getting like the itch to move and get to a campsite so I can just work a little bit easier. It's been kind of hot in Bozeman, so I have moved along and now I'm camping in one of my old favorite spots in Butte. So today really took a turn, um, but it's beautiful. I will show you the campsite now and I'm so happy that we're here because I just highly prefer camping. It's really nice to go into cities sometimes to get coffees or obviously groceries, water, like the usuals, or even just go out to dinner with Henry, something like that. But after a day or two, and I was in Bozeman for probably four or five days, I just, all I want to do is get to a campsite. The dog's lives are so much easier at campsites. My life is easier. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Let me show you where we are. Little campsite tour, if you will. So this is kind of the view from the sliding door. Sorry if that got a little shaky, but very pretty not like the prettiest place that i've ever stayed but it's very nice i do have good cell phone service and my guess is there's some like dirt roads right around here if i had to guess there will be people on like those four wheelers and stuff like that but should not be too much of an issue anyway i do have two meetings right now both actually for the wedding not even for work and so i'm gonna do those and then i'm gonna come back here and we will talk dogs on the road boom I have makeup on. Also, my dogs are chewing on like a lot of sticks in the background. So you may or may not hear Ella chewing on her current stick. Hopefully that will stop soon, but it's keeping her entertained. So I don't want to stop her. Um, but speaking of them, uh, I want to chat about dogs. So I kind of want the topic of this video and moving forward as I make like vlog style videos of me on the road, I kind of want to try and stick with having a topic to address in each one. So today I really want to chat about having dogs 
in van life and what that looks like. I do get asked frequently just if it's worth having your dogs in a van, whether you already have a dog and you want to move into a van and you're worried about training them or if they'll like it, um, or if you want to move into a van and you kind of want a dog, but you want to do other things that might make that difficult, um, which is there's a variety of them. Starting off with the thing, I think a lot of people already know about because it's something that gets brought up often is the fact that dogs are not really allowed in national parks. You can technically take them into the parks. I go into national parks often, but the dogs have to stay inside of your vehicle, but you're not allowed to leave the dogs in your vehicle if you are leaving the vehicle. Or they are allowed within like a certain number of feet. If I need to walk them or something, they always have to be leashed absolutely no matter what if you're in a national park your dogs have to be leashed and then if you want to like walk them or something because they need to pee and i'm just driving through yellowstone for the day then i can take them within like i think it's like 50 feet or 50 yards or something like that of a main road or a parking lot so they can't go on most hikes a lot of like really big parks like zion national park or something has one hike that the dogs can go on and it's paved and it's only a mile or two long which is i mean it's a beautiful place and if you want to take your dogs I, I wouldn't discourage you it from going into a national park i go into yellowstone and grand tetons pretty much every single year but for me it's more just driving through the parks and stopping taking photos um maybe getting out of my vehicle to look at the bison in the area and things like that i don't do a lot of hiking in national parks now that's kind of a con and i'm going to go through pros and cons of each however there's a bee in here that desperately wants my things just the reality of my situation is that i don't really love national parks i think that they're beautiful i don't mind driving through them but there's always a ton of people no matter when you go weekend weekday i mean you can try and like go on a day where you think there'd be less people but there's always tons of people and there's it's just a lot of driving like even if you're hiking and stuff there's just a lot of driving th like hours to get to the next thing and it just doesn't excite me that much and also you can't camp inside of national parks so i tend to camp and spend my time just outside of these national parks where there's tons of free camping a lot of times you can get similar amazing views as you would in the park itself if i was a huge national park person and my main goal of van life was to hit every national National park in the country then it might look differently for me however i love camping and hanging out outside of national parks and on public land so not being able to spend a lot of time in the national parks is like not a big not a big deal for me personally now another con is if you work remotely and let's say that you have a nine to five but it is remote and you need to go into a coffee shop from the hours of nine to five or go in somewhere and do something for that period of time maybe you're doing seasonal work or whatever that might look like for you uh that would be more difficult when dogs are in houses for that period of time from nine to five um when you're at work or if you have a nine to five and you work in a home they can kind of wander around they can switch positions they can stretch their legs it's a little bit harder to do that for an animal in such a small space like a van so for me while i can't go into a coffee shop for several hours and just totally hunker down into my laptop and fo like focus on just that and not worry about my dogs I actually really appreciate, which is kind of the pro version of this same point, I really appreciate that I can go into a coffee shop, work and focus heavily for about two hours, and then I can look up from my laptop, walk around, stretch my own legs while I go walk my dogs, get back outside. It kind of fuels my creativity, I think, a little bit more as well to just be able to like mix it up you know work for a couple hours and then spend even just 20 30 minutes walking the dogs spending time with the dogs making sure that they're comfortable and good to go in the van and then i can go back into the coffee shop and continue to work but if you have a nine to five that you need to be out of the van for for an extended period of time i would definitely consider what that would look like for you and if you think it would be safe and fun and healthy for a dog to do something like that another main point would have to be for security purposes I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my dogs specifically would like totally go after a person if they were trying to attack me. I don't know that. And I definitely wouldn't 
put my life on Ella, my golden retriever, protecting me if I was being attacked. But the point of the dogs acting as security for myself, at least, is not necessarily that they would go after a person or like wildlife if that was happening. It is the fact that they could bark and they immediately alert me before I know that anything's even close to the van. And the reason I know this for sure is because in parking lots, if someone gets way too close to the van, or I've had even people leaning up against the back doors, the dogs go crazy. And so if there's like, I've had bears or uh, coyotes outside of the van, the dogs always bark and they always let me know that something is outside. And so that just gives me a couple minutes to prepare myself or to do whatever I need to do to either leave the situation or get a weapon out if need be uh, just to do whatever I need to do to protect myself my home and my dogs and so for security reasons I just think having animals that are so intuitive and they can hear every little thing I just think is really important and it definitely makes me feel a lot safer knowing that they will tell me if anything is happening. One of the worst cons, probably the biggest one for Henry and I, is that whenever we want to fly somewhere, which does happen, whether we are going home to see family in the Midwest for myself or East Coast for him, or I've had a couple of international trips this year and Henry will be gone at the same time, it is such a pain in the A to hire a dog sitter for three dogs and if we're gonna both be gone at the same time then we have to hire someone on rover that we don't know and we don't necessarily trust or we have had to book an airbnb for like two weeks and have a dog sitter come and stay in that airbnb so then we're paying a thousand two thousand dollars for a house and for the dog sitter you know however much we've worked out that we would pay that person and it can just get very very expensive on top of the trip that you're already taking and so that has been one of the just biggest pains for us is anytime we need to leave the vans or go anywhere together that isn't in the vans then we have to like orchestrate this big ordeal and even doing something like rover which is cheaper than getting the airbnb and paying a dog sitter even doing something like rover is still so expensive for three dogs if you only have one I assume it's going to be a lot cheaper um it's just another thing to consider this one is definitely a pro for sure for someone like myself when I first moved into the van I had really bad social anxiety and having Ella because I only had her when I first moved in she just started every conversation for me people want to come up to you and say hi to your dog they just start talking to others before i would have to and it gives you a conversation to go into immediately if uh, you go to a dog park someone is gonna ask how old is she oh you know what's her name this this and then you can kind of get to chatting which if you don't know is how i met my now fiance henry we literally were both parked in the parking lot of dog beach at, in san diego and i saw a guy with a van and a dog and so our dogs ended up meeting and saying hello they got along really well and Henry and I started talking and then we saw each other again the next day at the same place and five years later six years later we are getting married so that's just to kind of say that maybe for social anxiety or for just getting out of your comfort zone dogs will always bring you that now I will say that I do not have any particularly reactive animals uh one of my best friends does have a reactive husky and for her her dog would probably be considered more isolating for her she has a harder time talking to people because she has to be very careful about who her dog is around if her dog can be around other animals um and so even just her and I hanging out, we have to be very careful about my dogs being outside and her dog being outside at the same time. So my dogs have opened up so many social worlds for me, while I think hers would be kind of the opposite, where it's closed off some of her social worlds. So if you're considering rescuing a dog, I would suggest maybe getting to know their personality, or I mean, I'm, this is not to say reactive dogs are not totally worth loving and like absolutely worth having. I'm just suggesting that if you were going to live in a van and you're looking for more of a social outlook to try and learn a dog's personality before fully rescuing them, maybe foster to adopt or something like that. That would be my suggestion. All right getting into the like more of the pros and these are the things you probably would expect me to talk about but i 
really do want to give you the details of like why having dogs and I do specify Ella often because she's the one that I moved into the van with and it was just me and her for a really formative time that I had in the van and then we added Pearl um but why just having dogs has completely changed uh my entire experience of living in a van I don't think I would still be living in a van if it was not for having Ella and then having Pearl they keep you sane on days where I probably would not maintain that same mental health space. There were so many days for the first year or two when it was just Ella and I that I only laughed that day. Imagine that. I, I mean, you are alone in a small space in the middle of nowhere. I only would laugh for days at a time because of Ella. She would be doing something so funny and so goofy and she just gave me someone to like look into the eyes of this living being who I knew was so intuitive and so smart and so she understood what was going on obviously it's not the same as having a human partner however just having someone to make you giggle or play with and just rough house around it makes the biggest emotional difference for your time in your van. There were days where I cried and Ella licked my tears. Uh, there were days where I laughed and she knew and so she would keep doing the thing that she was doing that was like making me smile and making me laugh. There were scary days where we went down really bad roads or someone was approaching us that I felt a little sketched out about and having just another living thing right next to you and you're just locked eyes, like that connection is so life-changing in so many ways and that's why, I mean, I always refer to Ella as like my soul dog and that is because of the experience that we have shared in not this van but my last van and now this one um and it's just made my time on the road so much more special like if you are per if you are a person who maybe leans more into like loneliness and you're afraid of feeling lonely or you do already before you're moving into the van van life can be so isolating and having the dog there with you makes your connection so intense and so special. My last point is essentially that it is up to every individual, which I know you know, um, but it's up to you whether having a dog in a van is going to be worth it or not. What are your priorities for living in a van? Are you going on a, like extremely, extremely long hikes? Maybe you get a dog, but that would determine what type of dog that you got um, and what age or whatever. Um, or are you really prioritizing national parks? Because if you want to spend a ton of your time in national parks, I probably would recommend not getting a dog um, or not having the dog in your van during that time. My priorities for living in the van was to seek purpose and to explore the world and I didn't really want to do that entirely alone. So Ella gave me on every single day, every single night, so much purpose that I would not have had without her and Pearl just doubled that tenfold. Moving into a van is already such a huge decision that adding a dog into that mix is just yet another really big decision. So I just think you should consider all of the factors. I wanted to kind of share everything with you just in case there was any points that you had not considered. And yeah, I think it's all about your priorities and what you're looking for, what you are seeking by living in your van. And that would, de that would ultimately determine whether or not you should or should not have a dog in the van. Obviously for myself, it was a resounding yes. And now I have three because I have Finn with me now as well. So I'm going to close my laptop and we will get going with the rest of our day. I will probably just show you a couple more things for the day. Um, but that was really the topic for this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know. Do you travel with a dog? What is your perspective on it? Would you like to travel with your dog? Do you think that your dog would or would not like living in a van? And yeah, always ignore the comments. I get so many of them about how my dogs are oh so miserable because they have to live in such a small little space uh, while you guys know that that's not true. All right, I am taking my sad pitiful dogs who have to live in a van for an insanely beautiful walk right now um, after I just got done filming that little piece. However, I don't think I shared with you, maybe I have, but I made a little TikTok about it. I might have shared with you already that there is a black bear living at this campsite. I would typically leave because obviously nothing is worth my dogs and myself, like our safety, but a guy came by and he's the one who told me and I saw him, it was a whole thing. He basically got out of his truck very close to our campsite and started yelling in a distance. And I was like, what is going on? So I look and I saw a black bear kind of running away. And so he came back over to my campsite and was like, I saw that you had dogs. And I just want to let you know there was a bear right there. And I was like, 
oh my god I saw it when you were yelling at it thank you and I would typically have bear spray but I don't have any this year I think I threw it out last year after I left uh, Montana and so I do need to get some more and we're leaving this campsite anyways tomorrow so I am just going to do my like due diligence of paying close attention but we are currently camping I feel like with a black bear, <laughs> just a casual campsite black bear, our neighborhood black bear, so friendly, so nice. Um, no, not actually. I will probably put little bells and some sound stuff on the dogs and continue to play like TV shows and things like that on a Bluetooth speaker so that we are constantly making noise because black bears are not like naturally confrontational animals unless you spook them or you like kind of walk up on them and scare them um, or if they have babies. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, my guess is that that black bear has eaten at our campsite or nearby from campers in the past, which is why you never feed wildlife, by the way. Um, and so that would be, that's probably why the bear was coming down towards our campsite. But I feel calm. I feel like we will be fine uh, just for one more night and then we will leave. Perfect. Exactly what I would want. She's trying to find a good rock, I can tell. Can I help you, Ella? Also, something I forgot to mention while talking about the dogs, this is the only point further that I will make, I swear, is that I personally do have like the habit, if I did not have dogs, I would totally hunker down in my van and probably spend like a couple days in the van, like barely leaving. I just could totally see myself doing that. And I'm just such a homebody. And because I had Ella and obviously still do, and it still works to this day, the first thing I do, I'm walking around big puddles as I say this, but the first thing I have to do every single day is go outside because I immediately have to walk the dogs. And I end every single day by going outside because I have to walk the dogs. So I just think that's so important and so like unique to having them um, for my mental health to be forced to get outside first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Um, and so I think that's like one of the biggest pros that somehow I totally forgot to mention. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I would really appreciate it. Like this video if you liked the video and leave a comment down below. Um, thank you so much for watching. And here are my animals. We have got one, we have got two, and the little nugget right there. Thank you so much for being here and I shall see you very soon. Good night.